Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. What I have here is uh, my personally owned AudioPipe AP3000.1 amplifier um, that I've been slowly working on uh, in between other amplifier repairs. Again, this is my personally owned one. I finally got this up on my uh, test stand and started to uh, do my burn in on it. And I found that one board was running hotter than the other. So I figured I'd pull it back over here to the diagnostics bench and uh, see what was going on. So this is a, a Type 4 amplifier board, which I have covered uh, in the past um, on some other videos, which I uh, will link above here in the corner here for you if you want to see how these Type 4s are. But this is the card uh, that you will find on these Type 4 boards. Uh, really super common board. Easy to work on, easy to understand. If you, uh, if you follow along on the videos that I have, that, that uh, explains these drives. So the first thing I always check, if I have a, a heating issue, the first thing I do is I go through a process of elimination. Uh, these boards have all new transistors, uh, power supply transistors and output transistors. Uh, so I know that the transistors themselves are good. Um, when I rebuilt these boards, I also checked drive and made sure that I had a uh, functional high side, excuse me, rail to rail. Let's keep uh, the terminology correct here. Rail to rail and the low side drive. So that's when I put it all back together and I got it up on the uh, test bench. So what I did is I brought it back over here to the diagnostics table just to see what was going on and why this one side, uh, the, how would I call this, the RCA side board, or board B, uh, was running hotter than board A. And that obviously will lead to a failure, which I don't want to have any failure. So, so what I did is I just started checking um, around the gates of the transistors. So on board B, for the rail to rail Frequency, we have 184 kilohertz on the gates of the outputs. So if you guys are familiar with these Type 4 boards, they should be about 147 kilohertz on the drive. So as soon as I saw that, I knew there was something, uh, something going on with that. Just to show you, here's board A, which is at exactly 147 kilohertz. So that obviously points out the problem of why this side's running hotter than the other side, is the frequency is too high on board B. So the next question is, is why is it off? Why is the frequency so high compared to board A? They're both driven with the same 50 hertz signal right now. Uh, sure, I do believe the there there is a small difference um, on the output between board A and board B from the preamp, 400 millivolts. Well, there's about 50 millivolts difference drop on this cable. So uh, just keep in mind, guys, that this little wire right here does have a voltage drop. Not a lot, but uh, about 50 millivolts is what I'm dropping across that wire. Which still doesn't explain frequency change. So these cards are controlled. The frequency is controlled by a set of resistors um, leading up to the the 4560 or the TL072. And what I found, I mean, you just, you can't make this stuff up. And I should have caught this um, at the very beginning. 
I didn't catch this. Uh, I missed this. You know, uh, we all miss things. I did my initial tests and saw that my drives were good, so I assumed everything else was good. Well, what's the rule in uh, in the field? Is you never assume. Well, I assumed. So I went back looking through my uh, resistor dividers here for that sets the frequency. And let me see if I can get a camera close up view here for you guys. Of this board, which is absolutely just incredible. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but right down in here, there is a resistor sitting on top of that resistor. And this resistor here is the wrong value. Now I did not, uh, I did not perform anything uh, on these cards. The, the drives were still good, so I didn't change any ICs. Uh, the TO072s or the 311, this is all original on these cards. But there's a resistor that's tacked. I, I wouldn't even call it tacked. There's a resistor that's on R722 that should not be there. It's sitting on it. And the resistor above that, again, is the wrong value. So this drive board here, these are using 10K resistors on R708 and 710. Uh, R722 is a 47 ohm resistor. So it looks like somebody has changed R710 again to this 8.2K, but left the resistor sitting on top of R22. Well, that would be the reason why the frequency is off on this card is R710 needs to be a 10K resistor. So uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, remove that 8.2K and get a 10K in there and pull off that 10K resistor that looks like it's sitting on that 47 ohm resistor which then should rectify the problem of having uh, the wrong frequency on this. So again, I just, it's just strange. You just, you, you can't, uh, you, you can't find this every day on amplifiers where there's just something lingering around like this and they have the wrong value in a location. So this clearly explains to me why this amplifier failed. Um, originally, which when this board failed, I do believe I have a video uh, on this board up in the top here. I'll link it if I do have one. Uh, this board, I had to do a, a, just a, a massive amount of repair on the uh, PCB because it really burnt the traces up pretty bad, uh, which makes sense because the frequency on the output is wrong. I will correct that. I will get these resistors changed and we will check this frequency and make sure we have it back to where it should be. So uh, stay tuned and I will be right back with you guys once I get these changed out. All right, I'm back with you. I have replaced uh, that resistor, R710, with a 10K resistor. I have pulled out, I pulled out the uh, resistor on R722 that was sitting on that 47 ohm resistor so it should have resolved the problem so let's go ahead and check our uh, frequency on the gates of the output transistors well, yeah 149 hey that's looking a lot better that's a lot closer and uh, 147 on board a 149 on board B so we're looking good. So it looks like we have set the the frequency is off just just a just a little bit. So we're 149 on board B and 147 on board A. 
So we're two kilohertz off um, on the drive board still, which I I won't see a huge thermal difference uh, on two kilohertz on the uh, output of this amplifier. Uh, so just by finding that resistor issue there, I do believe we have solved the problem of uh, the difference in uh, the rate of heating between port board A and port B. So I just thought I'd point that out here. Um, if you guys are working on dual amplifier boards, double check your frequencies on your output stage, um, on your gates, uh, not particularly the output itself after the inductors your frequency of your input i mean that really isn't going to tell you much but your gates uh, you want to make sure that your both boards or multiple board amplifiers are switching at least in the relatively same frequency range so i was i was off by 40 kilohertz uh which obviously you would see a heating issue uh, between 40 kilohertz on a frequency. So uh, just another video for you guys to help uh, we'll shoot and diagnose these boards. I saw a comment on, I do believe my original video of the repair of this uh, 3K about why one board fails fails more than the other. I'd have to go back and read the comment, but just by rebuilding this amplifier and spending time with this, I think I can come to the conclusion that it's either A, bad transistors, worn, just tired transistors, or B, you have a frequency change between the two boards so i do recommend you just watching your temperatures as you're thermal cycling your amplifiers which i hope uh, all you guys are doing is before you send your boards back out please you know cycle the amplifiers i use a sweeping input signal uh, from 20 hertz uh, to 250 hertz uh, just a constant sweep for several hours just to just to bring the temperature of any amplifier up and uh, run those transistors. Uh, I don't like warranty repairs, so I try to uh, minimize the return of boards. So I hope that helped you out today. Um, and as always, if this is uh, good to go and complete and done, you will find this on my website. This has uh, modified internal wire in here up to eight gauge. I went with the output wire on this. Uh, you will find this on my website up for sale for you guys to own if you'd like. This is the earlier version of this 3K. It's using four 640Ns on each side for the outputs. This is an earlier version. Uh, I would recommend this one for a collector uh, so, again, thank you for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe if you like repair content. And I will be out with another video soon. I try to make content on a regular basis for you guys. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up. I'm always available most every day. I try to take Sundays off, but I'm here for you guys. Again, thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.